Hey everyone, welcome to the optional NumPy arrays project video. In this one, we'll cover how we can make arrays of different shapes and how we can view the shapes of those NumPy arrays. Let's jump right in. I already have NumPy imported, so let's begin by looking at how we can make arrays of different shapes. Let's start off with an array of the shape 3 by 3 So our goal is to make an array of 3 by 3 We'll do this using integer values. We know that the first number is the number of rows in the array, and the second number is the number of columns. The number of columns just refers to the length of the sequence that we pass to the array function. The number of rows is just how many sequences we pass. If we wanted to create an array of the shape 3 by 3 that would mean that we would need three sequences each of the length 3. Let's do this now. So let's say sequence A is equal to a list of 1, 2, 3. Then sequence B will be equal to a list of the same length. So we'll say this one will be four, five, six. And then sequence C will be seven, eight, nine. Now to create the array, we'll say array ABC is equal to the NumPy function array, how we did in the last video. And now we need to create one object that we want to pass to this array function. You may be tempted to type in sequence A and then sequence B and do this for each of the lists, but this is passing three arguments to their array function. Instead, we need to create one list that has all these other lists nested inside of it. We'll do this using square brackets. And now we have one object with three nested lists. By doing this, we have one list, but we have three lists nested inside of it. Now we'll drop down and say print array ABC, and then use the shape attribute to return the shape. We'll save the file. I'll open up a terminal and then we'll say python3 numpy arrays project.py to execute it. And we get back the tuple that contains the shape. We have three rows and three columns. If we wanted to create an array of the shape 4 by 3 we could just potentially add another sequence. So let's say sequence D is equal to 10, 11, and 12. Now if we were to add this into the last entry into our nested list, we should be returned a tuple of 4, 3, which is what we get. Each of these lists only contain integer values though. So what do you think happens whenever we create a flow inside one of these lists? We'll do this with the sequence D. So to create a flow, we'll just use decimal numbers. So we have 10.5, 11.5, and 12.5. We'll save the file. And now remember that a NumPy array can only have one data type. So if one list has float numbers, that means the NumPy array will then use floats for every other value in the array. This is just because with an integer value, you can accurately display it as a float number as well and not lose any information. We'll see this return, so we'll take away the shape attribute, and we'll just print array ABC. Now we see that each list, although they're integer values, are converted to the data type of a float number. To see if you've mastered this concept, see if you can create an array of the shape 5, 2. However, instead of creating each sequence on a new line, see if you can code just one line of code and create that array. To get you started, it would look something like this. We would say array D is equal to a NumPy array. We'll use parentheses, and then we would need two square brackets to begin with. After this, I'll let you figure out. If you need any help, be sure to let me know. I'll see you in the next lesson.